Training camps are underway. Practices are happening daily. NBA League Pass has uh, taken its money out of my account. It can only mean one thing. The NBA is here. The NBA is back. We are about two weeks or so away from the start of the regular season. But until then, we have all the good training camp and preseason news to get through. A um, couple quick things just before I get to the main point I wanted to talk about. Uh, first off, the Boston Celtics bolster their roster, uh, specifically the forward spot, and sign Blake Griffin to a one-year deal. Uh, Boston was one of the top teams mentioned as a potential landing spot for him. Uh, still feels kind of weird. Like, it's going to look weird seeing him in the Celtics green and... Uh, trying to figure out how and what his role is going to be with the team. He immediately becomes a really important player for them, though, because he's going to fill that spot that would be uh, Robert Williams as he recovers from surgery. But Blake did not look good in uh, extended minutes in Brooklyn last year. So it's a big gamble, but I mean, there's not a lot of other players out there you can get. I was talking to a Celtics fan friend of mine. And he was saying, you know, Rodney Hood would be nice, Carmelo Anthony. Um, Hood maybe gives you more of a of a two-way option, um, whereas with Carmelo, you're just kind of hoping for offense. So Blake, you know, should hopefully bring energy on both ends of the court. And the nice thing is since he's at this stage in his career, you hopefully won't have to be drawing up plays and everything for him. He's just going to be, you know, the energy guy that we saw him as in the... Uh, the last bit of the Nets Celtics playoff series. Um, there was also a massive trade. <laughs> I say massive, not because of implication, but because it was just an eight player swap, which is really weird in the first place. But the fact that <laughs> the Rockets and the Thunder have completed a trade that will send Derek Favors, Ty Jerome, Theo Maladon, and Mo Harkless to the Rockets. And OKC will get David Nawaba, Sterling Brown, Trey Burke, and Marquise Chris. Uh, the Thunder will also get two draft exceptions and are giving Houston a 2025 second round pick. Uh, according to Woj, the deal is just mostly for, for finances for Oklahoma City. They are going to save a million dollars in salary cap and then also drop $10 million below the luxury tax. While Houston gets an extra second round pick, they've been drafting pretty well lately, so that should be a good asset for them as well. Especially with the Thunder um, still so entrenched in this rebuild uh, that they've been, whether it's you know intentional or caused by injuries and unfortunate injuries that continue to seem to impact them. But the real thing I wanted to talk about is preseason basketball is back. We kicked it off in Japan with Rui Hachimura and the Washington Wizards taking on the defending champs Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors. I did not watch this whole thing live. It did start at uh, 3 a.m. my time, 6 a.m. Eastern, and I don't remember what time they said it was in Japan. Uh, I recorded it, watched it back, and I got to say, as, as you know, obviously preseason basketball is not the pinnacle of performance, but just felt nice to have the game back. It felt nice to see those guys, and, and especially for Rui Hachimura, that is someone who is from Japan. Like, he is very proud of his culture. I believe he's the first Japanese player ever taken in the first round of the draft. He is is a is a star over there. And he put on a show. He ended up having the, uh, the most minutes played uh, for either team. He was all hustle and heart in the early minutes. He was pestering on defense. He was diving for loose balls. He... He was, you know, he was bringing the energy even when the rest of the players on both sides were just kind of sloppy. But this type of thing is something that I think the NBA does so well. I love the outreach. Um, they are going to Abu Dhabi in a week, I believe. It'll be the Bucks and the Hawks for those games. Uh, there is one more chance to see these um, Japan games that'll be happening. If you're watching this Saturday when I post this, it'll be tonight at 10 o'clock my time. Uh, which is Pacific, and then 1 a.m. Eastern Standard. And I believe it's just on NBA TV. I will probably be watching that one because it is on a little bit earlier and a little bit more manageable for me than 3 a.m. But it's just good to have back. It's good to see training camps going. We did get late-breaking news this night. Uh, this night. We did get late-breaking news tonight. 
that Kawhi Leonard will make his return to the court in Monday's Clippers preseason game, which absolutely takes that Clippers preseason game into much must-watch territory. Because we haven't seen Kawhi in over a year as he recovered from ACL surgery. And any time to see him on the court, to see what he looks like, I'm sure he'll probably be a little rusty, but just to see him back out on the court is something that is uh, probably... Probably a sight for sore eyes for many Clippers fans. Um, and really, I think that's it. There wasn't a whole lot. I just really wanted to to bring some attention, some more attention to those Japan games. I think it's so cool when they do the outreach and when they uh, when they travel to other countries. I know um, you always think about like China Clay when Clay Thompson goes and does his media tours and everything over there for Anta Footwear. And it's just cool to see. It's it's you know, fans around the world of the league are extremely passionate, and to see them get to have that moment, especially with stars like Steph Curry and the Warriors, and then to have their own star and Rui to cheer on. Also, I'm gonna say I know he did not have the best game. Um, Bradley Beal, I love watching him play basketball. He ended up only having nine points. Uh, he only played 18 minutes. His shot was a little was a little off. It'd been a while since he played after season-ending surgery last year, but I just love watching him play. There's a smoothness to his game that I've enjoyed for a really long time, and I'm I'm hoping for a healthy season. Also, weird to see Porzingis with a beard. It just doesn't look right. Kuzma too, but when you see them both next to each other, Porzingis is just looks, it looks weird. It looks glued on. It's crazy, and it's probably just because I'm so used to him without the beard. But the last thing, it's funny, I was i was just thinking, like, oh, that's everything. But truly the last thing I want to talk about is this Warriors team. They won the game. That doesn't really matter. It's, you know, it's exhibition here and, and mostly just for fun and for community outreach. But James Wiseman, in this game, 20 points, 9 rebounds, an assist, 24 minutes. He looked healthy. He looked athletic. He had burst and explosion in his moves. He had a couple putbacks where he just showed off an ability to just have an insane second bounce. Like he bounced, hit the floor, and was up again before the defender even had a chance to process what was happening. And if that's what they're going to have with James Wiseman, you can probably pencil this team back in for a top four Western Conference seed and uh, like 55, 60 wins pending health because Wiseman absolutely unlocks another level for this team. They had originally gotten him to kind of fill kind of like a hybrid of the center and Draymond roles because he is such a skilled passer. They didn't really use it here. He was more just kind of rim running and, and running that two-man game with Steph Curry, but it was impressive. <laughs> and if he's back and playing at that level with someone who's more like a more traditional big like Kevon Looney to switch it up and you're still running lineups with Draymond at the five, it's going to be tough, and, and you know, that's something the Warriors have been so good at over this sustained run has been being able to have different ways to beat you and different ways to to run with teams, so you can't just shut down one thing on them. But I was unbelievably impressed with James Wiseman. Um, I never was like, yeah, he's a bust, but, you know, when you deal with injuries to your, your knees and your legs and your meniscus and all that, like, it's tough when you're, you know... 6'10", 6 6'11", 6 7 feet. Like, when you're a big dude, like, that stuff's got to feel a thousand times worse. So, to see him looking that good is a sight for sore eyes, I'm sure, for Warrior fans. I think that's the second time I've said that. I'm sorry. Um, but it's just really cool to see just as a basketball fan. Like, I would like to see Steph Curry and Klay Thompson and this Warriors roster have as many good deep runs as they can. Because when they're gone, they're going to be gone. And, you know... I want to see them enjoy that success. I want to. I love those guys. I love watching that team play. It sounds. It feels weird to say as a Lakers fan, but I love watching that team play. So if this is just another facet and another dimension to their their team and that offense and that defense, I think it makes them that much more dangerous. Obviously, but it's going to be that much more entertaining to watch an entire season of it. Like if I can just watch Steph Curry average a career year of assists kicking open threes to Clay Thompson and throwing lobs up to James Wiseman. Yes, yeah, sign me up for that. I would take, you know, maybe one or two fewer Steph threes a game if it meant I got to see a couple sweet half-court lobs and, like, crazy trick plays that we know he's capable of making. So 
that I think is everything now. Uh, NBA TV, I will definitely be watching. Uh, if you have thoughts about any of the the latest news in the league uh, or opinions on these these Japan games, the upcoming games, anything like that, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I really appreciate you watching. Hope everyone's doing well. Enjoy the weekend. Thank you.